Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work, and we are about to do the review on the Spyderco Capara. Thanks to Seems Logical for letting me check this out and for all the support he's done for our channel. Also, if you guys would like to support, down in the description, I put a whole bunch of brand new links. Help a brother out. If you need to use, if you need to get to Amazon or make Amazon purchases, use the links below. There's tons of new links down there. They're all great links from sharpening supplies to tools for knives to a bunch of knives. And if it's not down there, just let me know and I'll see if I can get a link for it and put it down there for you. Also, if it's not down there, you can still get to it through the links. So just hit one of the links and then, you know, you can always get to the item you're specifically looking for by just getting there through the links. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it if you guys use them links. It really does help our channel out. Now, the Spider Coke Par, man. Oh, man, I was wanting to check this thing out for so long. And I finally got it in hand and... It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it is pretty awesome. So this thing has had lots of love from the community. So I'm going to go really quick through the specs. Three and a half inch blade, eight and a quarter overall, basically the same length as the Spyderco Shaman, the PM2 with the Griptilian Large. It's, you know, pretty common EDC size for a full size knife. Here's the Benchmade bug out. So you can see something a little smaller, but it's a very typical size or at least length. It's typical length for, you know, a larger EDC size knife. And it's a lot sleeker though than a lot of other knives, which is pretty cool. So the blade steel on this one is S30V, if you can see that, and then a full flat grind, sorry, full flat grind, and then the carbon fiber scales. And it is a compression lock, but first let's get into this blade. I did not sharpen this, it came sharpened from Seems Logical. He put a nice work sharp, if we can get it to come up, a nice work sharp convex edge on there. But I am going to show you um, a little bit of stropping here in a second that I haven't done on it yet, but I'm going to record it and I'll throw it in this video on some of my Veneve compound. Now there's some of that down in the description. There's a, a, literally a whole sample platter full for a really good price. So anyways, so this full flat ground blade is a beautiful blade shape for EDC. Now I know they kind of labeled this as like the, what a kitchen utility, kitchen EDC knives, you know, whatever, which cool, whatever. I mean, that's awesome. Either way, the blade for EDC, this is an amazing EDC blade shape. It works so good for utility cuts, the, the utility cuts just the way the the blade kind of tapers up right here gives you a lot of flat and even in the parts that kind of give you a little belly it's still relatively flat for great great slicing and push cuts but the utility cuts it's got kind of a beak thing going where it just works so good when you lift your wrist the tip is already in position for utility cuts. So that means you're going to get a lot of leverage when you pull back. So it's gonna be easy to get that tip into something. And then as you pull back, you will have tons of leverage because you'll have all the strength in your arm in that cut and the material will be pulled into the tip as you, you, know, you pull it across. Now for slicing, the slicing capabilities, it's, you know, it doesn't have a lot of belly but it's got decent geometry. Now, the spine thickness, you know, it's not real thin or anything like that, but it's also not thick. It's right in that happy medium place. But the taper from here, you can actually see it right there, the taper from here down to the edge is, is really nice. Great geometry, slices really, really good. And it just pushes through materials very, very well for the, you know, this size of knife. Now, the ergos, they're arguably not neutral, but it still gives you a lot of position. So if I want to turn back and cut a strap, 
my palm sits really nice and nestled in there. Now it is thin, you know, in some grips, but my pinky kind of locks this, the butt end of it in for good straps. And I can go all the way up back behind there, behind right here with my two knuckles to really pop it. But this teardrop shape really locks into your hand very well. And then you can also creep up really close like this for slicing. And since it goes through material so well, the grip on the, on the handle for the blade, you know, the, the blade to grip ratio just works great. It works so good for all cuts, for utility, for slicing, for, for pretty much any type of cut you can think of. Now, this little spot right here, this little choil is really comfortable for, for me personally, for my hand, for this to kind of push up into my hand, this little spot right here, push up into my hand, get my finger under there, get that nice little pinch. Feels very, very comfortable. And then the thickness is like just a perfect thickness for this depth for what they were going for here. The carbon fiber is well, well done. The pivot is T10 and the rest of the hardware is T8. That's amazing. That's awesome to see. I love to see big pivots and I love to see big hardware all the way around, even the clip. That's amazing. Let's talk about this action really quick because the action is amazing. And there's one thing that really, really makes this action really awesome. And I'm gonna explain it here in one second. But first, the, the spider flick works really good. You have a great placement for your thumb to just lock it in. And then for me, for my hands, my middle finger just lands right there. It's just perfect. So I heard a lot of people saying that this was really tight and it was slippery and stuff like that. I don't find that. I don't find that at all. I mean, I it's plenty of room for me. Um, I mean, maybe I don't have sausage. I mean, I have big hands, but I don't have like really thick fingers. You know, at least I don't think I do. But I have plenty of room for you know, to unlock it. Now for the thumb flick, same thing. You just, you have a good place to grip your four fingers and pop it up. My thumb basically lands right there. Now the next part that I think is really cool and what I was talking about before is the slow roll. Why is this so comfortable and so good? I, I figured out that one, you know, like I was saying before, my thumb lands right in a perfect spot for it. But then when for like my natural, if I was gonna draw a circle right now with my thumb, the natural place is literally the direction it goes. Now, if it was any taller, it wouldn't be natural for me. Like I'd have to swing it. This is so natural, like just a natural circle for me right there. So it feels very natural and also satisfying. I don't know why, like when I just cup it like this in my palm, and I grip it and I go like that. It's just so satisfying. I don't know why. And then also check this out. When I do that, my pointer finger is already set up to go right there. So as soon as I click it open, if I want to, my finger is already there to close it. It's just so easy and is very, very drop shutty, nice and centered. The action is just amazing on this thing. Love the action, love, love, love the action. And get this, even left-handed, I've gotten good at it because they have this the little spot right there. So, and let me put my hand around the camera, sorry. Um, I have gotten really good at it left-handed and normally with compression locks, I'm not that good left-handed with it. I'm actually, I'm just not confident. So with this one, I'm actually relatively confident. Now, if I wasn't under the camera, I can actually go like that and then swing it shut. But I'm like, I'm in like kind of a tight spot right here where my arms wrapped around this thing and everything else. But if it wasn't for that, I'm actually relatively good with it left-handed. So that builds me a lot of confidence with it because that's my one complaint about compression locks and reversible clip. Now let's talk about the clip. The clip works so good. I mean, it's a wire clip. Everybody knows wire clips work good. It is a deep clip and it's reversible and everything is sucked in. Now that you see the screw is up a little bit, 
it's not an issue. Not an issue at all. The clip doesn't bother me at all. Now, there is lots of weight relief in there, if you can see that. So it has a great weight. You know, it's not like super light, but it has a good weight in my opinion. I love these pinch grips I can get with it. It's just so, so good. Now, let's talk about some bad. So, some bad things. Oh, man. So many to go over. So many to go over. There's no bad things here. I can't find a single bad thing, to be honest. Um, it makes me almost want to really, really purchase this knife. If it would do anything for the channel, I totally would purchase a knife or this knife. I have a link for one down below in the description. It's amazing. The one, if I was going to like, just like really throw a ball in the air and say it was bad, I do feel the clip when I'm down here. When I'm up here, it's fine. It just nestles right there. But when I'm back here, it does. I do feel it, you know, but not to the point to where I want to call it a bad, but I do feel it right there in the bone, just a little bit, a little, little bit. And then I'm not a huge fan of shiny liners. I'm just, I would rather see a stonewash liner, but for some reason it works with this knife. So one, the screws are shiny, even though the pivot, this is another thing. The pivot is like a stonewashed, yet these are shiny. I wish they would have just did this over here and then did the same thing on the liners. Do you know what I mean? See the, the pivot? The pivot is like a almost like a gray bead blast. They could have did that to the liners, did that to the screws and to the clip. That would have been banging. But, you know, but that's not really, I mean, it's not really a bad thing. I mean, I, I'm like suckling it, nitpicking at that point. So, um, now... Some other things really quick. I love the plunge grind. You know, Spider Coast plunge grind works really good. It just drops straight down to the blade. You don't have to worry about a sharpening choil or anything. Basically, as you sharpen, it just goes right up the this, this plunge grind. But you can sharpen all the way to the plunge grind. Kind of like this. You know, you see how it's just going up the plunge grind, which isn't a bad thing. You know, that that's, you know, that's just fine. Um the the hole right here you know spider coast holes are a really good size it's got a nice good edge on it for it to grip your finger um everything's so smooth and just just great man the lockups rock solid um yeah so many so many great things and you know the clip in and out of the pocket is really really good let's do this stropping really quick so i have this is the black uh, Veneve diamond compound right here. And then this is um, three slash two micron. So this is a very heavy grit. This will damn near sharpen your knife. But from the use, I do have some spots here. Yeah, right there. There we go. I'm getting a, some, some, some significant spots. So we need to take a look at this edge really quick, and then we'll take a look at it right after and show you what this compound can do. Get a really good look at it because it's going to be different <laughs> after. Now you can see how it looks. Now let's do some stropping and watch I'll do the whole thing on here. I won't fast forward so you guys can see how long this took and how much dropping. Now, in all reality, I could probably do it right now, but I just want to take a couple passes and flip it over. I like to use my strop equally. Last one. All right, let's take a look at it. I did not count how many strops it took, but let me wipe. I'm just wiping it on my pants really quick. Look at the grip pattern, how much it's, are, it's changed. Look at that. You see that? It looks like it's a freshly sharpened edge, doesn't it? Now, it's just from stropping on this Veneve compound. You would think this was freshly sharpened. You really would. It has a brand new grip pattern across it. And it looks good. Now there's a couple spots. It looks like that I can still see the old grip pattern. But all that means is I could just take a couple more passes. 
You, do you know what I mean? Like that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it significantly brought that edge back. Hit the other side. Now this side is more of a polish. Um, so this would be more for a mirror. So this isn't going to give me those grit lines like that other side. But I'm just hitting it on there just to uh, just to do it. Anyways, but that is the difference between a diamond grit or diamond compound and some other compounds. So I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Amazing knife. I love the knife. Um, I wish I had one. I, I want one. <laughs> I want one. There are a couple things that, like I said, I think would be awesome, but I feel like the things I could do myself, like I said, with the, the bead blast, the screws, you know, like, um, do you know what I mean? The, the screws matching the hardware and the liners. I think that'd be cool. I love the bread backspacer. Capara, it, it's supposed to be something for like a, um, like a spider, uh, like a black widow kind of, I don't know, something like that. I remember hearing that before. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.